Hey foodies, thanks for watching. I want to show you today how to make profiteroles, or sometimes you might know them as eclairs, chocolate eclairs, savory eclairs, sweet eclairs, whatever they are, they're super yummy. And they don't require many ingredients, four ingredients to be exact, if you include water, and you can make them savory, sweet, whatever you like. So let's start by looking at the recipe. And I've picked up the butter first because I want to heat up the butter and the water in the pot. And you'll notice that I'm using my mixing bowl because it's going to go really fast and then we're going to put it in the mixer. Okay, so that's come to a boil. I want to pour all of my Frankie's all-purpose gluten-free flour in. And I want to stir it. Whew, it's getting hot. Until it forms a ball. And this goes pretty quick. formed into a ball. Now we're going to put this on the stand mixer. And making sure that you don't burn yourself. Now I'm going to beat in one egg at a time until the whole thing gets glossy and just keep adding all of my eggs. Now for the second egg. And the third. The fourth. And the last fifth egg. There we go. I'm going to give it a scrape down and do one more mix and then it should be perfect. Between each egg it took about 60 to 90 seconds of mixing before I added the next egg. There we go. And you can see just how sticky and it's going to be so wonderful. So I'm going to scrape the paddle off. And I'm going to put almost all of this into a piping bag. There we go. So let's take a little tiny bit out. Uh, yeah, that much. And the little amount that I'm going to save, I'm going to mix in with cheese and make it more of a savory puff. So I'm just going to leave that there for a moment. Okay, so I've got my piping bag. Okay, you'll notice that there's no sugar in this recipe so far, which is really awesome. So the, 
The kids are gonna love these. You can add a little tiny bit of sugar, but I find if you fill them with like, I don't know, a, cust a sweet custard or whipped cream, that's just sweet enough as it is. Okay, so now, we grab a cookie sheet. I've put parchment paper down just to line it. And I'm gonna do rounds to start. I'm gonna try and do rounds. You wanna make sure you space them out because they are going to expand a little bit. And alternatively, what you can also do is you can do the classic eclair look. So I'll do a few of everything. So I'm just gonna lightly pat these down with a wetted spatula, just to give them a bit more shape. Honestly, even your fingers would work as long as they're wet. Look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna put these in the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. And while those are in there, I'm gonna get the other ones going. And just mix this up. I've got another cookie sheet with parchment paper and I'm going to use a portion scoop this time. And you can see the portion scoop works just as well. Okay, so these are gonna go in the oven as well for 30 minutes at 350 degrees and we'll pull them out and then we can start filling them. Look at these profiterole, they look wonderful. And you can see that the cheese ones turned out really good. I can't, oh my goodness. And then, and then we've got the plain ones. Remember, no sugar in these, that's exciting. And then we've got some long ones as well. So there's a couple of things that we can do with the long ones. We can cut them down sort of like a hot dog bun and then open them up and you can see how airy and light they are on the inside, which is really, really nice. So I'm gonna do a couple of those like that. Okay. So I've got some tuna salad left over from lunch and I'm gonna put these into the profiterole. And I find the best way to put these in is just to cut them in half We'll grab a spoon. Oh, look at the inside of those. Oh, so glossy and wonderful. And then we put some tuna like that. And looks lovely. These profiterole freeze really well. So if you're looking for like school snacks or something to take on a walk, anything really, if you're going out, you can make them well in advance, pop them in the freezer, and then pull them out. They don't take long to thaw because they're so light and airy. I mean, look at, look at the pockets of air in there. I mean, they'll thaw in very little time and then you just pop one in your mouth. So I'm gonna finish off the tuna ones. I wanna show you some of the whipped cream ones. I'll just set that aside. Now I'm making a piping bag now, and if you want to find out how to make this piping bag, I made one in one of the previous episodes, and you can click the link in the description below. A little bit more. And I'm putting a piping tip in, mainly because I have to pierce the, the profiterole. Oh, it didn't take off enough. There we go. Okay. So we want to 
jab and fill. And you'll know when they're full. Come on. When the piping bag starts to get pushed out just a little tiny bit. You don't want to fill it up so much that there's so much whipped cream in it that it's just oozing out. And if you want to add a little bit of sparkle to those sweet profiterole, you can drizzle some tempered dark chocolate on top. Or, you can just dip them in dark chocolate. So, now the moment I've been waiting for is to taste them, see just how they are. And this cheese profiterole looks really good. Mmm. 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 It's really nice. I mean, it's it's spark it, it it's crusty on the outside. It's really really quite pleasant. Mmm. But a meal just isn't finished without dessert. So you have to have dessert. And with profiterole, it makes it really easy. I wonder, what would your favorite profiterole be? Would it be sweet or would it be savory? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I look forward to reading all of your comments below, and I'll see you next time. And I'm gonna pipe that into some of the cheese ones and some of the plain ones. Through, okay, good. Nope, I don't know if the tip is big enough. Ah! <laughs> oh, like that. I lost my tip.